Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the video of the Roshan Redemption, and today I'm bringing you guys my live reaction and review for Tokyo Ghoul Ray Chapter 63, which is called Tree Buried Alive. And actually, looking at it, maybe I should call myself Roshan the Hobo instead of Roshan Redemption because I really need to shave. Uh, so sorry about that, guys. Nonetheless, uh, I've heard some pretty good things about this chapter. I've, I've heard some pretty crazy things happen. I haven't gotten any spoilers, luckily, so I don't actually know what happens. But judging from the title and a comment that I got um, on this chapter. I think some pretty crazy shit's gonna go down, so let's go on and get straight into this. Uh, and of course, Hachikawa got completely fucked up by Shiroke. Um, Shikore. Sorry guys, it's, it's too early in the morning right now. Uh, God damn it. Well, that's what I'd be saying too if someone bit my freaking nose off. Munch munch. Oh, that's disgusting, dude. <laughs> it's Tokyo freaking ghoul though. I've actually been reading a lot of Berserk lately, and holy fuck. Like, I thought Tokyo ghoul was bad, but honestly, I think Berserk is way worse. It's just even more fucked up. Because there's just, there's just so much sexual violence in Berserk, and I personally don't really deal with that all that well. So, I don't know. Um, specifically, there's one arc specifically, which is just like... There's one, there's actually one scene specifically, which is just ridiculous. But I'm gonna stop talking about Berserk and get on to Tokyo ghoul. Um, get back, Ayumu. You fucking ghoul. My nose ain't for you to snack on. Is that- Oh gosh, it's pineapple. Pineapple up in this bitch. Chi-chi. Shirizawa, don't interfere. Mr. Hachikawa, you look much more manly. <laughs> fucking pineapple, dude. Without your nose. <laughs> what? <laughs> fucking Takizawa, dude. Oh my gosh. He just got wrecked, didn't he? Okay, well, they're fucked. Hachikawa just got wrecked. Hachikawa's probably gonna die at this rate. Let's make this hurt. Oh my gosh, these people are crazy. They're psychotic. I mean, Takizawa I expected, but like, my goodness. Here we go. Wanna eat Hachikawa? Agree. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, poor Hachikawa. I never thought I'd ever say that, but poor Hachikawa. This is just some uh, emergency first aid, but let me go ahead and zoom in on the page because it's actually kind of hard to see. Thank you, Toru. We've confirmed that Algiri has their base here on Ru Island. Uh, time to go back. Hachikawa, for what it was worth, I thought he was admirable. A long time ago, we in uh, an investigative squad tasked with the suppression of the Black Dovers tried to save a civilian and was almost completely wiped out save for one member. That member was Hachi. Ever since then, Hachi's personality was a little twisted. Hachi, oh, she's crying. He was foul-mouthed and greedy. Not almost universally hated, but I loved him. Or liked him. <laughs> oh, that's kind of sad. You don't like your freckled face, eh? So you've grown out your hair uh, into that mop-like mess. What an idiot, sheesh. Look at my face. Forget your freckles. Even this shit smeared horror is a thousand times better than hiding your face completely. He's a completely different person now. I wonder what he's after. And she's saying that, of course, about Kaneki. I understand what you're getting at, Hoagie. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh my gosh, that's torso. That's so creepy. That fucking scared the shit out of me. No. No, what is he doing? Oh my gosh, no. She's just a little girl, man. Oh my gosh. I feel so bad. Oh no. No! Did he fucking kill her? What a bastard! Toru, I can't believe you come all the way out here to see me. And he's choking, he's choking Mutsuki. Mutsuki should be able to fuck up Torso though, Mutsuki's stronger. Not that I have faith that she's not gonna get captured. Shit! It seems Ken Kaneki has captured the one-eyed owl. What do you think? What do you lot think? Is Takatsuki the king? Okay. okay, okay. Interesting. This confirms that the CCG is indeed aware that Kaneki, um, uh, that Kaneki thinks that Eto or Takatsuki-san, uh, they're all the same person, and they're they're also the one I now. That that Eto is the one I now. Would have been so much simpler if I just said that from the start. But unless this confirms that maybe Kaneki's not, Kaneki's still up to something, but he's not hiding Takatsuki's identity. That's what it confirms. I believe there's a good chance. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> same. Nimra. Did they not teach you manners at the garden? Hmm. Don't remember. Did they teach you... Kaiko. Did they teach you... Kaiko. Did they teach you... Kaiko. What the fuck, dude? What? Oh my god. 
Okay, okay. So for those of you who don't know, Kaiko is a member of V. And they're just having a casual conversation. Did they teach you Kaiko? Oh my god. Oh shit. Holy crap, dude. As long as she's in the CCG's hands, the owl is but a caged bird. Look, you're no ma you're master of manners either. Nevertheless, she is Kuzan's daughter. Remain vigilant. As for Rize, we cannot continue to be led around by that. I will leave that to you. I will leave that to Kisho. Nimura continued to shadow Ken Kaneki and Kuzan. Oh my God! What the fuck is going on? What the what is going on? Oh, my I cannot comprehend this right now. Okay, 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 okay. Let me try and sort out what's going on. Arima is working for V. That's what it seems to me, because Kaiko is giving him orders. I will leave that to Kisho. And Furuta is also working for V. So apparently they're both in league with V. So is the CCG in league with V? Does the CCG know about this? I don't know. This chapter is blowing my mind. Your hair. You cut it, didn't you? Yes. Poor Kuzan died in what? Not in vain. I've never seen someone cut their hair while being followed around by a CCG investigator. It suits you. Is that Takatsuki? Do I look like a go-getter woman? What the f- <laughs> F- Fucking Eto, dude. I'm glad I did. It feels wonderful to have it done right before this huge event. I managed to make both my editing department and the Buru see reason. And have gotten permission to conduct a press conference uh, in regards to Takatsuki's last work. Investigator Sasaki, might I request your presence at this conference? Oh my god, what the fuck is gonna happen? Then I want you to see this. I don't think I've spoken before this many people since the release of Black Goat's Egg. Rejoice, Forguchi. The day of your disposal has been finalized. And that's, that's Tchaikovsky's co press conference. Okay, this is big. Something big is about to happen. This book has been a long time in the making. It's the story I wanted most to tell. I'm deeply grateful that I've been given the chance to announce its completion here before you all. It's quite literally an account of the author's life, the story of Sen Takatsuki, the individual. But before I introduce the work to all of you, there's something I need to tell all of you about me. Oh my god. <sighs> she's gonna tell everyone that she's the fucking one I know, isn't she? I am a ghoul. My last work I wrote for my lonely brothers and sisters in arms, wretched creatures born into the wrong world, endlessly yearning for flesh and blood. Is that it? Wow. Well, that stuff with Takatsuki at the end wasn't that surprising. I mean, I figured she'd reveal it eventually since, I mean, the CCG knows, so. But the, 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 the thing I'm most interested in is the stuff with V. Because Kaiko, Arima, and Furuta were having a meeting, and it seemed like Kaiko was giving them orders. He said, and I quote, I will leave that to you, Kisho, which implies that he's giving Arima a task. And you don't give Arima a task. You don't give someone a task unless you're their superior. So, I'm not obviously saying that necessarily like, that Kaiko is stronger than Arima. We don't know that. I don't think he is, because earlier in the first, uh, in the first, uh, in the part one of Tokyo Ghoul, he said that he wouldn't be able to take on Kuzan alone. So, I, but I do think that maybe he's higher up in the food chain in, in, in V, in the V organization. So, uh, I, there's, there's, there's definitely some connection between Arima and V. Um, there's potentially a connection between the CCG and V. So, I'm going to go ahead and reread the chapter and bring you guys a short analysis here. Okay, I'm reading the comments on Manga Stream. This comment is freaking hilarious. So, the top comment is, I'm sitting here wondering if Eto will take it to the next level by exposing him too. Eto, the guy behind me is a ghoul too. Audience, gasp. Eto, and he's a high-ranking dove in the CCG. Double gasp. And he ate me in both ways. Eh? Toka drops coffee cup. What the fuck? Anyways, there are pretty much three main things that I want to talk about in this chapter. And the first thing is everything that happened to Mutsuki and the rest of the Hachikawa squad. So Hachikawa is dead. Um, it seems that Ayumu, who's uh, Hachikawa's subordinate, the little girl, is also dead. Um, killed by Torso. So the last person left is Mutsuki, and Mutsuki is being choked by Torso and has probably been captured at this point, which actually sort of puzzled me because I feel like Mutsuki should be able to defeat Torso, so Mutsuki wasn't explicitly captured yet, I don't think, but considering that Torso's there, and also Takizawa is there, although he's probably busy eating Hachikawa, knowing Takizawa, but nonetheless, there are too many ghouls there, I think, for Mutsuki to escape. I think she might be able to escape if it's just Torso, so I wouldn't necessarily say she's going to get captured yet, but I feel like it's a very good chance that she's going to 
me, which is not good, because you guys all know that I put out that theory about Mutsuki getting tortured and possibly even raped, and I'm not sure about getting raped. I'm not sure if Ishida does that type of thing, because sexual violence in Tokyo Ghoul isn't as much a thing as in other seinen, um, but being tortured is very possible, uh, and there are a ton of perils. There's actually one peril to part one in this chapter, which I'll talk about later, um, but if stuff in part one is anything to judge by, and all the perils we have between Mutsuki and Kaneki, there's a very real possibility that Mutsuki is going to suffer a similar fate to Kaneki, that, that Kaneki did, excuse me, in part one, and get tortured by Torso. Oh, and before we've got to my next point, I do need to say, Aimu's death and everything she said about Hachikawa was sad as fuck. The next thing I want to talk about in this chapter is the meeting between Kaiko, Aruma, and Furuta. And in my opinion, this is the most important thing in this chapter. You can argue that everything with Takatsuki was the most important thing, but I kind of saw that coming. I mean, everyone was going to find out about her identity eventually since the CCG didn't know. I suppose her announcing it herself is a little bit crazy. But even still, it's not that much of a revela revelation to us. This, on the other hand, is huge. This is a game changer. This changes everything. So it was already indicated in the previous chapter that there was some sort of connection between Arima and V, and it's confirmed here. And like I was saying earlier, I suppose I already did talk about this good amount, but I'll say it again. Kaiko says, and I quote, I will leave that to you, Kisho. He says, we simply cannot continue to be led around by that. I will leave that to you, Kisho. So Kaiko is essentially giving Arima a task, and Arima inclines his head. So that would imply that Kaiko is Arima's superior. Which means that Arima is either working for V or even a part of V. And this begs the question, is Arima a ghoul? Because there have been theories out there, which I personally do not believe, but even still I'm going to mention it, that Arima is a ghoul or a one-eyed ghoul in some sense. And there were theories that he was the one-eyed king, and I, like I said, I still don't think that's the case. Uh, but even still, we were led to believe that V was an organization solely made up of ghouls, and if that is the case, it would imply that Arima is a ghoul. But like I said, I still don't necessarily think that this is true, and I still think we shouldn't make any assumptions. So for right now, all I'm going to say is that Arima and Furuta are not only working together, but they're also working for V, which means either there's a connection between those two and V, or possibly even a connection between the CCG as a whole and V. One more thing I want to mention is in this chapter it said poor Kuzin died in vain. I'm not sure who's saying that. Um, is that confirmation that Kuzin's dead? I don't think Kuzin is dead. I think he's still alive because we saw him alive. We know that Takatsuki captured him and is using him to make artificial ghouls. So I don't think Kuzin's actually dead. I feel like I misunderstand this point. But nonetheless, it's there so I thought I'd point it out. Okay, and the final thing we need to talk about is, of course, the ending to this chapter in which, one, Takatsuki reveals to the world that she's a ghoul, and the look on Kaneki's face is just priceless. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, but more importantly, what intrigues me more is that she said she's publishing a book that details her entire past. Does this mean that we're going to get an art dedicated to Eto's past? Because I would love to see that. I would love to learn more about Eto's past because it's been hinted that she has a very tragic past. And I would really like to learn more about her because more and more, I'm starting to fall in love with her character. I think she's a very good character from what I can see. She's a very interesting character. She's got her quirks as well. So I would love to see that. And then one more thing I also want to point out is that Eto looks a lot like her mother now. After she cut her hair, she looks a lot like her mother. And obviously the hair color is different, but even still, she looks so much like Ukina, it's difficult to ignore at this point. And then the final thing I want to point out is that at the end of this chapter, Eto says, and I quote, I am a ghoul, which is exactly the same thing that Kaneki said in chapter 63 of part 1. So that's just an interesting parallel. I'm not sure if it carries any sort of significance or maybe Ishida's trying to foreshadow something, but it is a parallel, which is very cool and great work, Ishida. Alright, well that is pretty much all I have to say about this chapter for now. I might make a theory video later this week about all the stuff that happened with V because I feel like that is significant. Um, but other than that, the chapter wasn't actually that mind-blowing. I mean, it was crazy, but we sort of expected stuff to happen. We're sort of expecting Mutsu to get captured, sort of expecting Takatsuki to reveal her identity. I did not expect stuff with V though, so. Overall, great chapter. I'm going to go and give it a 9 out of 10. A lot of stuff happened. We had a lot of plot progression, a lot of foreshadowing, uh, so I'm super excited for the rest of this arc. The common question of the day is, would you guys like to see an Eto backstory arc? And also, do you think it's actually going to happen? Uh, I would definitely like to see it, but I'm not sure if we're going to get an entire arc on her. I feel like it's a bit of a stretch, but definitely a couple of chapters. I think Isha is going to show us a little bit more of her past. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next Tokyo Ghoul video.